Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bosch Splitter. See, this is the part where I had a line in here. There was going to be applause and raving. Yeah, confetti? No, not confetti. That's that's not very green. <laughs> no, I'm not Dr. Nick. I don't have my own theme music when I walk in. Um, so, actually, we should switch sides because I'm Chris Weibel. Um, work at uh, the en engineering team lead over at uh, Stark and Wayne. To my Hi, right, I'm. Balaji Nagarajan, Director of Software Engineering at GE Digital, working on Predicts. What is Bosch Splitter? I'm sure you guys are waiting to know that. So um, everybody is familiar with Bosch, or at least some, somewhat familiar with Bosch. Um, at GE, we have um, many Cloud Foundry deployments in production. We have quite a handful of them. And as our journey with Cloud Foundry grows, what we found out that managing a single large deployment of Cloud Foundry is no joke, um, especially when um, we throw in the practices and policies that we have at GE, and which is very typical with any large company that you have, where you have rigorous change control and change windows. Um, doing a change, a single change through Bosch starts taking hours, days, and probably sometimes a week. And given that uh, particular problem, what we we were facing with was if we started a stem cell change on a Friday evening, because some, someone decided that changes are good on Friday evenings, but I don't know who these people are. But um, a change start that starts on Friday evening typically takes it all the way to a Monday morning. And anybody who's done uh, production rollouts know that um, when you start a change like that, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a no-starter, for one. And given how Bosch works, um, it is so hard for us to stop that change to do if there's a production outage in between. If you want to fix something else in between, it is such a hard thing to do, which was our um, reason behind going down this path of Bosch Splitter. The use case essentially presents itself as where, uh, given our requirements that we have, we wanted to um, write a tool around uh, Bosch that given how we build our manifest, given how we build our own templates, and given how a repo is managed with Git and Concourse, without doing too much of plumbing, we wanted to break down a single manifest into a more manageable um, deployment so that every deployment can be um, started on um, independently of the other one. And we could start and stop each deployment uh, at a meaningful, hour, uh, meaningful pace. This gives us the flexibility of doing um, um, a, some sort of an AV deployment or canaries, and we can have stem cell changes where you can leave a particular runner in one stem cell while others are in an older stem cell as you propagate a change through uh, meaningful uh, working hours as well. And I just want to reiterate uh, something that Balaji said. Um, some of us actually wind up doing the production deploys um, and being able to break those up into eight hour windows so that you can just, without having to hit Control C on Bosch, and stop your deploy at a nice, happy place. That makes everybody happy. So then you can just keep going on Monday morning. Makes your change control board much happier that you're able to control this little beastie um, for your stem cell upgrades, or your A/B testing, or whatever it is that you want to do. So. And this actually came out of one of one time when we were actually doing a change. It was a um, stem cell rollout. We were going through a deployment of close to 600 VMs. There was a production outage where we actually had to go scale one of the run, uh, cell, um, runner groups. We could not do anything other than control C the deployment, revert, do some major surgery, revert the changes, and then just for adding um, a bunch of VMs in one run, runner group, we got to go do that. That was one of the genesis of why we went down this particular uh, tool. So um, this is a late add to the, the slide deck here that doesn't even have a slide. Biology and I both have children, so we wind up with random things that are inserted into our book bags. Thank you. <laughs> this is everybody else Cloud Foundry deployment. This is our Cloud Foundry deployment. It's much bigger. It requires a lot more to keep it afloat. That's where tools like Bosch Splitter and, and some of the other things that we won't be showing you today, but feel free, feel free to stop by and ask us questions on how to maintain big duck versus little duck. And I thank our children for, for giving us these. So, um, how does it work? Bosch Splitter. A um, couple bits and pieces that we need to understand before we can really dig into this. 
One for Bosch Splitter, our, our goal was to make sure that we could continue to use the templating that everybody is used to, whether it's the templating inside of CF release or it's Genesis or whatever your templating tool happens to be, we don't want you to change any of that. What it is is a post process that will take your big deployment manifest and carve it up into smaller deployment manifests that are easier to manage for whatever your reason is. So we have a make file that's gonna help us do that, um, where I'm gonna specify what the jobs are that I wanna split out of the main big deployment manifest, and I'm gonna wind up with something that's called core and something that's called split. So before you see core on all the rest of the slides, what core is, is your original deployment manifest with the one job in it, or multiple jobs in it, that you would like split out into its own separate deployment manifest but I still want to use all the templates that I already have. What the splits are is that one job or more jobs that you want to split out from your main deployment. I wind up with two deployment manifests and then I deploy them just like I always had with any other deployment manifest that we have out there. So we're re not rewriting Bosch, we're not rewriting any of your templates. So our traditional way of generating a CF deployment manifest. Um, sure everybody's done this before, right? Okay. Uh, you're gonna start out with a series of templates in CF release or CF deployment or CF whatever comes up with this week. Um, you're gonna make your big giant deployment manifest. You're gonna deploy that deployment manifest. And in our example here, we have a very simple one. We have three jobs, X, Y, and Z. Three X instances, three Y instances. And job C is this huge one with six instances. Let's pretend that job Z is our a cell group or a group of runners, and I would like to maintain those separate for stem cell upgrades or for A-B testing or whatever it is that I want to do. This is what the life cycle looks like using Bosch Splitter. Again, we're gonna use the same templates we always have. We're gonna generate our deployment manifest, but at the end of that, we're just gonna run a little split, which will split it out into two deployment manifests. The first one, like I mentioned before, would be core.yaml, and what that represents, back from our example, once we deploy it, is jobs X and jobs Y, the three instances still, and then we were gonna split out job Z, so I'm gonna have a separate deployment manifest for that. Again, bleh, can't talk. Again, sourced from the original deployment manifest, I'm sorry, the templates that we already had, we'll deploy that, and I get my six instances of job Z. If you didn't follow that flow chart, let me try to explain this in a slightly different fashion. What we have here on the left is the original deployment manifest that we had. If I was not using Bosch Splitter, that would have been the deployment manifest I would have used. So there was the three jobs in there with all the properties and networks and releases and all sorts of fun stuff that's in a deployment manifest. The next two represent, hey, I split out job Z. So the core, has everything except for job Z in it. Uh, there's a strike through there that just shows you these are the pieces that actually aren't in this deployment manifest. Uh, the one on the far right represents the split job, which is just job Z in it. Important thing to see here is, is that the properties, the network, sorry, the properties, the networks, the resource pools, et cetera, are all the same amongst all three of them. We're not trying to reinvent how Bosch is going to deploy any of this. So, demo time. And the oh, one point sorry. to add is, if you, were, if you do this in Bosch 2.0, that manifest will look much smaller, obviously. There will be only one um, copy of that. So, um, before I actually start showing the individual pieces of the demo, I um, want to let you know that what we're using here is, is the templating inside of CF release as a version 2.60. Um, that I really didn't do much else to it other than just created it using the existing templates that were there. So w this repo here takes that Bosch Lite manifest and I've got a very simple make file that I created. Um, this make file, there's two important bits of information in it. The first one is, is where is the YAML file that I created with my templates? So in this case, I've got a subfolder called manifest and inside of that, because I lack creativity on naming anything, um, we have a file called manifest.yaml. That's my deployment manifest for CF. 
the next line in this, this is the list of jobs that I would like split out into their own deployment manifests. So anything that isn't in this list is gonna wind up in core.yaml. Anything that is in this list is gonna get its own deployment manifest file generated for it that only has runner Z1 in it or only has runner Z2 in it from a, from a jobs perspective. So now for the magic, because that's what we were paid to do, and that's why you are all here. So we're gonna run make split. My clear did not work. Magic. Thank you. All right, let's see what that actually did. So um, Adam, because everybody has to have an editor and this is the one I'm using, um, you'll notice that there are three additional files in here. There's our core file and our three split files. Um, with Adam, since the manifest.yaml file is not green, it was not changed in any way. So the main point of this is the original manifest.yaml file that we created with our templating, we're not making any changes to it whatsoever. So if I needed to revert, if I need to roll back, something has gone wrong epically with Bosch Splitter, I've still got my original deployment manifest that I can use for rolling back. So we're gonna take a look at core.yaml here real quick. What you'll find is, while there are references to runner Z1 in here, because I've got resource pools and network definitions in here, there is no job for runner Z1 anymore in here. If I look at one of the split jobs specifically for runner Z1, the only thing that's in here is one job for runner Z1. There are no other jobs in here. That's it. So when we go through and we deploy these files, Bosch light, please work, Bosch light, please work, Bosch light, please work. Got dark. Uh, Core.yaml, deploy. Again, nothing special here other than hitting yes. Um, we're gonna go through and we're gonna do going, we're going to deploy the core file which is gonna have all the Cloud Foundry components minus runner Z1 and runner Z2. I cheated, I've already deployed this. So we also show the same thing. I'll show you the split real quick even though we, I will cheat and tell you that it is a no op as well. Dash N operation would have been good. If I do a Bosch deployments, wow, it looks terrible on that minus. We have three deployments in here. Bosch sees this as three distinct deployments. CF Warden, which is the name of my deployment manifest, because again, I didn't change the names of anything inside of the, the CF releases script. That deployment is always called CF Warden. The runner Z1 and runner Z2 version of this were automatically named for me um, inside of the split script. If you want to come up with a di different naming convention, you're welcome to do so. This is just the one that's provided you by default. So if I look at Bosch VMs, which this looked really big, really awesome on a different screen, um, I've got all of my Cloud Foundry deployment, or all, all my Cloud Foundry VMs, plus one for runner Z1, I've got my runner in here, and runner Z2, I've got two runners over here. Let's show you how I have nothing up my sleeves and to prove that this really works. We have an app already deployed. This is CFM. I don't know who wrote this, Dr. Nick, if it was you. Um, it is an awesome tool that I use just about daily to debug things. But to show you that you actually have a working Cloud Foundry deployment split across multiple deployments inside of Bosch, ta-da, app works, even though the runners aren't inside of the core Cloud Foundry deployment. Pauses for applause. Thank you. Um, now I need to mess with this and switch back to that. Then we can switch back over to this and demo time is over. So the split script is located um, on a Cloud Foundry community repo. Um, before there's a mad dash to write this down, 
was hoping there was a mad dash to write this down. This slide deck that you've seen here is actually uploaded to the CF Summit site uh, for this particular talk so you can pull it down later on. Um, at this point, I'm going to open it up to any questions anybody might have. Sir. Sorry, I missed the second slide. Uh, so what he's asking in slide two was our use case. Why were we doing this again? And I'm just going to give this to Mr. Balaji. So um, the biggest use case why we are doing this is typically our deployment is pretty huge. We have like a 500 to 600 VM deployment. And when you roll a stem cell across that, if you say max in flight is four, that takes three days. The problem with that is if you have a, if you have to pause it to do something else in between, that's, that's impossible. You gotta control C it, you gotta go undo everything that you've done so far, and then you gotta do some major surgery to get back to Bosch to do whatever you want. So what we've done in our deployments is to, we've split our entire Cloud Foundry into multiple splits. So you, you have a, we have a split of all of our core components into one, manifest, and we have runner per um, availability zone into different. Uh, we, for example, today we were, afternoon we were talking about splitting NATs out of into own split, so that you don't have to touch NATs if you really don't need to touch NATs. That's the biggest use case that we have um, for this particular uh, tool. And the other thing is, you don't really need to run a change for that long. If you, if you are, for example, if we have maintenance windows where they say start your change and stop it during normal business hours so that you don't have to waste your weekends. This is what we do for that. So what I pulled up on the screen here is actually our uh, concourse deployment that we have. Um, that we've actually got the individual Diego cells that are split out into their own uh, concourse jobs here. So there's, if I were to do a Bosch deployments against this, I would actually see five deployments that are associated with this particular Cloud Foundry. What this allows us to do is, if I've got a change window that, that looks much better on my screen, sorry. Um, if I've got a change window that only allows me to do deployments for eight hours for a stem cell upgrade. Uh, the way that we have these scaled out is I know I have enough cells that are in each one of these groups that it'll be about eight hours for me to upgrade each one of these. So if I need more capacity out there, I'll actually create a new cell group just so that I can leverage the, the, the split tool that we have here um, so that I can do a Monday through Friday deploy from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. instead of starting it Monday morning and then watching paint dry for 72 hours straight while I'm doing a, a, a stem cell upgrade. Um, we should win awards for watching paint dry. So um, the only other part I had on this, if there aren't any more questions, there is a question, and there is a question. It's fun to watch Brian run. Hey, I'm not riding in the morning. It's my own exercise. Uh, thank you. So in, in case if there's a use case to do an unsplit, for example, can you spruce it? Can you spruce the, the two split manifest? The manifest is left assets, so you don't need to unspruce. The, you, when you ran, when, when he ran the um, split, the original manifest left assets. So what you get out of it is three split files, but your split, your file is still there. I thought you had like the core and the, you had like two different the, you yeah. files, right? So there is a core. Okay. Flip over to this. So inside of here, I'm gonna leave the original manifest.yaml file alone. And I'm actually not using that as part of my deployment process. So it's, it's there as an artifact that I can reference back. What I'm actually deploying is core.yaml in the two split files. So um, the other thing is, it's funny you mentioned Spruce. Spruce is actually the magic that glues all of this together. Um, so this is as much of a talk as, hey, here's a cool little tool to do this, as much as Biology had a problem I've got Spruce, I've got Templates, I've got Concourse, how do I solve that problem? And Spruce is the thing that really makes all of this work. Without it, I'm dead in the water, to be honest. So. You want a question? That was answered. Awesome. Sir. How do you manage uh, static IPs and networks? 
So for the most part, um, if you're using uh, cloud config, not an issue, it's just gonna carve it up. Um, under the, the old Bosch one style deployments, that was where I did cheat just a little bit. Uh, because the static IPs, what I've actually done is I've created different network blocks that would be specifically associated with, say, cell, the cells are a bad example because they're not statically IP'd, but say we statically IP'd the cells. Um, I have a separate network block for cell Z1 and cell Z2 that I define and I, I carve up ahead of time. So yes, there is a little bit of cheating that we do if you use an old Bosch 1 um, style manifest, but, and if you download this uh, GitHub repo, you'll see that's actually what I did, is I've got a separate network block for runner Z1 and runner Z2, um, just because Bosch Lite's goofy with the networking. Sir. Yes. Sure. Um, so we're using this primarily, we're using this in production right now for, for cells and for, for runners. Um, I haven't tried to take more complex things that aren't going to use the, the Bosch links like that and try to do it. Um, it's a great question. I wish I had a better answer for you, to be honest. The names are the same between them. Yay. Hi, Long. Brian's coming up behind you. So we can just split, um, just match the deployment name and add more features to that. It's just something that they've never used before, right? Yeah, so. They haven't gone that far. So if you know at the end of the day it, um, that you're gonna reference a deployment that's gonna be split out, you actually know what the name of that deployment is going to be at the end because you're controlling the algorithm on what your deployment is named. So yes, that is how you, you could account for that. But it's not that complex of a tool. Truthfully, it's about five lines of bash long. But it, it's, uh, it, it, it's, again, because uh, Spruce does all of the heavy lifting for us that I basically just have to tell Spruce to go do this thing for me. Anyone else? Fire. No, because I'm gonna let Bosch do that for me. What I am gonna do though is if I wanna control, say I, I can do 100 runners a day, I am actually gonna come up with multiple jobs. They were not gonna be called Z1 or Z2 or Z3 anymore, but I am gonna call it runner one, I'm gonna give it 100, runner two is gonna get 100. I'll let Bosch figure out where it's actually gonna stick those individual, but the main point of this was was for the change control um, of we have, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> I would like to visit my children. My children do like me still. So at the end, I would like to cleanly break this at the end of the day. And if I've got to do artificial things like group 100 runners at a time in a job called runner one, that's what I'm gonna do so I can go home at night. So, anyone else? This has been fun. I didn't anticipate this many questions. So um, as far as what's next, um, one probably thing that I can think of is when you go look at a Bosch deployments, you see, you used to see one, now you see 20. Um, we should probably think about how to make a logical representation of how each one is linked into the other one. Um, anything else you can think of? Um, I knew he was going to ask this, so I wrote it down. And the uh, pipeline's also showing the multiple Yeah, jobs. same thing with the pipeline. So how do you give a logical view of a job that's been split into one or more? How do you link everything together to give you a logical representation of what's going on? Last little bit here. So actually when we did put this in a series of concourse pipelines, uh, one of the first things that we had to do after we were finished with that was the all view, 
we couldn't do that anymore because unless you had a 4K screen on something about that big, you couldn't read any of the blocks anymore. Um, so there is, when you, when you have the individual concourse jobs, I can juggle here. And so this is just one environment. I didn't get the top of it. Um, so we can see here that uh, core.yaml is the one on the left. Uh, even doesn't even though it doesn't say core, that's a good point. Um, and the individual cell splits are on the right hand side. I've got four groups of these now, plus my core. I've now got five blocks that I got to go through in order to do a stem cell upgrade for a whole environment. This is great. You get 20 environments that went from having 20 blocks total to now 100 blocks, plus all the other stuff in between. A little bit you got to do for concourse. Um, but uh, yeah, that's something we, we don't have an answer to yet, but we're looking for input on it. Anyone else? Yeah. Yes, yes, no. Dr. Nick, anything? <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.